backstage capital. Patted me on the head and said, "You're doing a great thing, and that's wonderful." And they looked at me like I was like selling Girl Scout cookies or something, you know, or you know, trying to trying to get to camp or something. And I'm like, "You're missing out. Do you not understand how amazing some of these founders are? Like, it's not. I'm not doing a good thing. I'm trying to get rich out here. <laughs> like, these people are amazing." This lady on my left is no introduction. Oh, I do. I think. <laughs> Just to warm up, could you? Can you introduce yourself and tell people kind of who you are and a little bit about your background? You don't have to go all the way back to growing yeah. up in Dallas, but... Yeah, I grew up in Dallas in a sleepy town. Um, no, I am, so I'm Arlen, if you're not familiar. Uh, started Backstage Capital officially in 2015. I was sharing a house with my mom, or an apartment with my mom. I had a blow-up bed and a whiteboard, and the whiteboard said Backstage Capital. And, um, you know, that was, that was my reality and built backstage to what it is today, which is around 80 companies that we've invested in, and 79 of those uh, are led by women, people of color, and LGBT founders. And our goal is to, to get to 100, to 100 of those companies by 2020, and it looks like we'll get there this year, so a little ahead of the schedule. And I guess 2020, um, 100 founders wasn't a vanity metric, so what was the right. kind of driving force behind yeah. Really so he, he stole my he stole my quote. <laughs> yeah, it's not a vanity metric. It's all about representation. So when I was, you know, kind of have to go back to having zero dollars raised and also never knowing what it re really would become. Like I didn't know I'd be sitting here, right? So it was like, what is that driving force? What do I want to do? What is the whole point of this if I'm going to spend my my days on it? And to me, I knew I couldn't like. I can't save the world, I can't do everything, I can't invest in everybody, but what if I could invest in a hundred companies that had at least one person under that mandate? What would that prove? It would prove, it would answer the question first of all that I got so many times of are there even, I, I, I kid you not, people ask me for like years, investors ask me, are there enough companies that are run by women that you could invest in? I was like, have you ever left your house? Like, like, what, like there's, it's half of the world, what are you talking? It was just like mind boggling. So like, I figured out that I could prove out not only do we, not only do we exist, but the quality of choosing uh, who I think would make a great portfolio of 100. And of course there's many more than 100 that could be invested in, but it was about the representation that that would be to then hopefully have others mimic it hopefully prove it out to other uh, funds that were run by white men, which is 90, I don't know the number today, but it's something like 93% of, of fund managers and, and uh, principals at U.S. funds are white men, and um, prove to them that like that there's, a vi there's, there's viability. A few weeks ago, I saw you talking about how you had a a 360 moment when you went to a Janet Jackson concert. Get it! <laughs> I, I thought you, I was scared about. of this question. You said you, her no, boss. No, no, no. Okay. I just wanted to kind of share why that moment was so special and what you did that night and why it was special. Oh. What you did. Well, so when I was 13, 37, when I was 13, um, Janet to me, you know, was everything. Like she was just it. She was a black woman who like ran a company, who was a, 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 an entertainer, you know, talented. And um, I wanted to see her in concert. She was going out in concert, so I would, this would have been like 94. And uh, my, you know, didn't really have that much money ever in life, so I couldn't afford a ticket. So my mom ended up getting me like a ticket that was like on the rooftop of somebody else's house or something. You know, like she got me what she could get me. You know what I mean? Because she knew I wanted to to be in the in the building. And she put loop earrings on me, which I don't think I've worn ever since. <laughs> So, because she wanted me to look older so nobody would like come at me or something. So I was there by myself with my little loop earrings, you know, sitting in the back. And somebody uh, came up to me and said, hey, you've been here since early. We saw you coming early. Do you want to come see Janet in the front row? And I was like, my mama didn't raise no fool. You ain't giving me, you can't lie to me. There's no front row. But then I thought about it. He doesn't want my ticket. So what, what would the game be, you know? Mm -hmm. So he said, I'll walk with you. 
we'll talk, you keep your ticket. If I'm lying to you, then you walk back, right? So I walked up, I had nothing else to do. Waiting on Janet. Walked up, he hands me the ticket. They let, they let me ride on in to the front Jay, row. And I sit there and I'm just like, my first concert ever in life. And I'm seeing Janet Jackson front row and like 15,000 people behind me. And that night, um, it changed a lot for me. It, it gave me like a personal boldness to make some life decisions that I needed to make at the time. It also, when I look back, I can still see it. I still see this motion of looking back like this. And, you know, I'm, you know, screaming Janet and I lost my voice that night because Janet Jackson was there. And I look back and I'm telling you, you know, man, woman, uh, everything in between, everything around and uh, above and beyond, and every uh, skin tone you could imagine, everybody was dressed the way they wanted to be dressed, little kids, adults, everything was singing the same song. Mm. And it blew my mind and I said, oh, okay, whatever this is, I'm gonna chase this mm. for the rest of my life. So. Um, Literally, what that made me do is I got into uh, live music production as an adult, you know, and I ended up going on tour with many musicians and having that experience every night. It really did tell me that night, and I promise you this, it told me you can do anything you want. So, going back to your original question, so it happened a few months ago, Janet went back on tour. Um, I treated myself, I went to one of her concerts by myself, and I got really good, you know, seats because that's what you do and then I got two ex extra tickets that were in the same row as mine and I said I'm gonna just gonna go to this concert I'm gonna walk around and I'm gonna find me <laughs> I'm gonna find me in the back and I'm gonna hand that person those tickets and I did that and I found a mother and a daughter and they were like way up in the rafters and they were happy <laughs> they were like yes <laughs> Janet <laughs> and I sat down I was all creepy I was like is this your first Janet concert <laughs> They were like, uh, yeah, like, <laughs> they were like clutching the purse a little bit. <laughs> but it was, uh, you know, uh, it was a two women of color and mother-daughter team. And I said, and I just said, uh, I said, would you like to see, I did the same kind of script. Yeah, literally the same thing that they told me. And uh, I said, and then they went down there and they were let in. And then, I mean, you know. They just had the time of their lives, and uh, or the time of their night, or whatever it was, and got a little video of them at the end and stuff. And to me, that was like, I would do that every day of my life if I could. That was like so, so fun. For one of the kind of more younger founders or, or newbie entrepreneurs, what's some tips that you've given in terms of like pitch practice and making sure that they're ready mm -hmm. to take the step into when you sell equity in their business for, for yeah. capital, because it's a tough road to go on. Yeah, it is, it is tough, and a lot of people, a lot of people are uh, pitching too soon, looking for venture capital too soon. Like, it's, there's a, a whole group of people called angel investors that are like, I would rather roll with them any day um, for many, many reasons, and they're often overlooked, mm -hmm. and they are looking for you as much as you are looking for capital. So a lot of people are looking at venture capital like it's the godsend and it is not. And saying all this as a VC, saying this in a venture capital office, it's the truth. So I see a lot of people just not, maybe not knowing what they don't know. So not knowing that it's too early. And then please know everything you can about your competition. Please know, you know, do as much, re if you do as much research as I did when I started backstage and you're set, because I did, I took myself through school, basically. I took myself through the school of venture capital yeah. and I didn't have any information about it at first, but I, I, I read everything I could, I watched everything I could. So become a master of the craft that you're in. Mm -hmm. Like that is the best thing I can tell somebody. It's like, know it inside and out. What does your day to day look like as the founder of Backstage? So what do you actually do? Are you more hands on with your portfolio? Are you more managing your team? Are you still the actual team that's working with mm -hmm. you? All of the above. <laughs> it's, there's not a day that's the same. Uh, our team is growing by the week. So I'm, I'm learning how to be a I guess a leader in that way. Learning that on the, on the job training like most founders. At the same time a lot of what I'm doing is about fundraising and it's about brand awareness. So this is brand awareness. I do a lot of speaking events and a lot of travel. I spend about 80% of my time away from my home 
city, and I, I don't think that's going to slow down this year. And we spent a lot of time in Slack, uh, and highly recommend it if you don't use it. I wouldn't be able to do things on the scale that I do them if I didn't have the team. Like I could do what I do, but it wouldn't have the same reach because of the team. Like right now, we got 10 people back home who are working on like 10 different things. I will say it's a stressful job. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of responsibility and a lot of things coming from, you know, different angles and all sorts of things. But it's rewarding and I and I enjoy it and I and I if I did not enjoy it I would not do it and if I never if I don't enjoy it I'll stop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.